with Crest in partnership with Elusive. It's uh, Producer Dodge here with our Crest Christmas special. Uh, I'm here with Tom. How's it going? Not too bad. But before we get started, we actually do have some good Christmas news um, in that Wales actually has its first ever world champion. Yeah, amazing, isn't it? Um, yeah, Llewellyn Williams, aka Sponge from Aversor, um, surfing in the, uh, in the ISA World Para Surfing Games. Uh, has taken down the title. He came second last year. He, he did actually get the highest two scoring waves last year in the Neil final, um, but got an interference last year and it, he was really, really beating himself up about it. And uh, I know that he was really determined to put that right this year. And, and this year he was dominant in the final, running out first. Mark Stewart of Australia in second, Alter Olivares of Chile in third and Yvonne Oregi of Spain coming fourth, but um, Llewellyn Sponge, or Sponge, he is, he is the world champion, and that is the first time that Wales has had a world surfing champion. We'll have to get Linda Sharp to check that for sure, but I, I don't think that it's ever, hap- it's ever happened. It's not known to me. And uh, I, I tell you, the one thing that, that really was very moving watching it live on the webcast uh, my dad was actually there on, on the pier. Oh, cool! Um, yeah, because because he lives in he lives in Pismo Beach, and, and that's where and that's where it was. Well, that's how your dad managed to like wangle one of our uh, one of our uh, little inserts we're going to have on this episode. Isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, and so then um, he, anyway, seeing Sarah um, Sponge's other half, Sarah Gibbons, on the beach, and uh, it was looking pretty comfortable in those last few minutes, but she was she was biting her nails down to the quick as to you would elbow. say in the, you know, to the elbows in, the, in those final seconds and then when and, and and there was a there was a ride that took the australian i think from fourth to second in the closing seconds of the heat but he, he needed a big score at that point and and it was, he, it was out of re- it was almost certainly out of just reach. about out of reach yeah, yeah. and um Anyway, when the score dropped and he you know, and he'd only gone from fourth to for, yeah for, he went from fourth to second i think she was jumping, you know, just brilliant. You're not going to see, at the time of recording, it's the eve of the World Cup final, you're not going to see any Argentinian or French football fans jumping around tomorrow night in HD with as much passion as Sarah was jumping around when awesome. she found out that, uh, that awesome. Sponge had won the world title. I, so, did, I didn't catch it, unfortunately. So congratulations, Slonga Vachiadai Sponge, and uh, we'll be, hopefully you'll be telling it to Crest soon. Absolutely, but you, you've... Um, you've Bet Sponge, and you were commenting on you commented on the adaptive, didn't you? A little yeah, up in North Wales. Yeah, he's a he's a really good egg. Um, he's a, yeah, he's a, he's a great guy. Um, he's a he's a Cymro as well. He speaks Welsh. Um, he's he's really keen to give back to the sport. Um, you know, he was he was right in the thick of it up there. Uh, I met Dana Cummings as well of Amp Surf, also of Fismo Beach, who who's one of the big benefactors of adaptive surfing of the adaptive surfing, surfing circuit uh, they they're really good people it's a great vibe and and uh, yeah there's, there's probably going to be the two events again next year in britain um that one in north wales and then the one in bristol and if, if you can get to them to see them they're they're, they're great events i'll certainly try and make the bristol one because i i uh, i frequent the wave yeah. quite a lot these days and it'll be the chance to see a world surfing champion who is welsh absolutely surfing. So, so uh, congratulations, Sponge and Sarah. As long as I die down. Yeah, awesome. And as you know, this is our uh, this is our Christmas special. Our uh, last Christmas special we did, we talked mainly about Christmas presents and stuff like that. We will Everyone's touch- skint this year, though, aren't they? Yeah, we, we will touch on that a little bit. Um, <laughs> I'm certainly skint this year after the surfing-related Christmas present that I bought somebody. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We'll, we'll get into that later. <laughs> um, but this year, we're going to talk about Christmas surfs, because Christmas surfs are free, unless you go travelling around the world for them. Yeah. Um, is Christmas surfing a, uh, a tradition in your house? Yeah, d- pretty much law. Yeah, um, tr- yeah. Try our best. Bit harder with kids, but um, yeah, that's what grandparents are for, isn't it? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, it's it's a very important part yeah, of the Christmas ritual for us. Same for you. Yeah, we've normally got you know, there's there's normally swell this time of year, so yeah. it's all about the wind. Are we going to be in? Uh, are we going to be having a Coney Grovel? Just well, we're like, going to find we out, aren't we? Bay? I tried to contact, uh, I tried to see if I could beg Jamie Bateman of uh, Surfline to give us uh, a closer forecast, but he reckons he doesn't want to call the wind this year until the 23rd, because he said that uh, it's looking so variable at the moment 
So he so he, so so he said he said only only on the twenty third is he prepared to say where and when to surf at yeah, Christmas. Jamie's just having a he's hoping for a little solo session somewhere. Isn't That's he, probably his plans. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, um, all right, and we'll kick off our uh, our Christmas surfs with um, I've done them in, I've done them in a particular order, and I want to bookend them nicely, right? All right. So we're going to kick off with a British, uh, yeah, uh, English, an English surfing legend in uh, in. Gabe Davis, we're going to kick off with it, right? Yeah, let's do it. My Christmas Day surf. I remember a dreamy one in Hawaii. Oh, turkey in the oven. Off to surf Velzy Land with Lauren. Then a sneaky little sunset beach sesh. Come out of the sea, turkey done, boom. Happy days. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> so, basically... He went surfing while the turkey cooked, and probably which went, is pretty standard, yeah. except and after and after Lauren decided to get out and he went to surf sunset, she probably went and did the veggies, then didn't she? So, yeah, that's what I was going to say. It's pretty standard Christmas behaviour, apart from the fact that it's Velzy Land and Sunset Beach. Exactly, yeah. Which um, I could do without surfing sunset. I reckon I don't think it would do me any good. Oh, I, I, I'd love to be in Hawaii at Christmas time. Must oh, it'd be, be amazing. amazing. But I'm I don't really have the talent for it. Yeah. Um, right, would you go, uh, let's go next. Let's go to let's go to our dear, I can't say our dear departed friend. He's not dying. He's only got to New Zealand. Um, oh, the Rhines. Yeah, let's go. Let's go to let's go to Rhines next because we, we all miss Rhines. We, we we miss Rhines everywhere except in the lineup at the point. Don't we? Yeah, yeah. I suppose, like many, uh, I I haven't really surfed very many times on Christmas Day. But um, my goal, if I ever did, was to actually surf in board shorts. And uh, the opportunity to do that did actually come about one time on a a surf trip with Chris Chip. And uh, we went to the Canarian island of Tenerife. And um, Christmas Day came along and I was like, right, the surf was good. And the opportunity, I wasn't with my parents, so I was able to go surfing. So I paddled out. And uh, it was like four to five foot, it was clean, it was really offshore, it was lovely. And I was just stoked. And I paddled out, and I sort of paddled out the back, it was early morning. All I can remember is turning round and looking up behind me, just to be greeted by this incredible view of this volcano, which is Mount Tidy, completely covered in snow. And just sitting there, sitting in board shorts, in amazing warm water and seeing snow on a volcano was something that will stay with me for uh, for life, actually. So it was amazing, yeah. Awesome. That, that yeah, sounds that's amazing, great. It? That, that makes me think, right, about... I was talking about this the other day with someone, right? How many places in the world, how many countries in the world do you reckon there are where you can surf in board shorts? And I mean, like... Surfing board shorts, like, legitimately, where, like, you're not just trying to force the issue, you know, by having half an hour with a neoprene jacket on or something, right? And get barreled. So, so in this country, right, you can surf in your board shorts for ages you're on a hot barreled. summer's you're, you're day. Barreled but it's very unlikely days, yeah. to be a barreling, you know, yeah. if it's barreling in the summer, you're not going to be in your board shorts. It's going to be, like, a bit stormy or something, right? So, so I wouldn't call Wales or, or England countries where you can get properly barreled in a pair of board shorts. Like, if you, if you surf in board shorts, but... It'll be small and clean, right? So how many countries are there in the world where you can surf in board shorts and get a barrel? England, in Bristol. Well, <laughs> yes, I, oh, okay, I suppose you can. And I was going to say this, but this, you can't do the second bit, right? How many countries are there in the world where you can surf in your board shorts, get a barrel in your shorts, and tank down a piste in the snow in the same nation? Only the USA, or possibly Japan. France. Japan, you're right. I hadn't thought of Japan. France. Uh, I don't know. But I don't know. It's not really, it's not, Japan's not known for its barrel and reef breaks, though. Yeah, no, they, I, I surfed this spot in the south of Japan, Kaifu. Really intense barrel and waves and board shorts, yeah. I hadn't All thought right. of Japan. And well, I know, I although really technically they're different islands, aren't they? Because it's Hokkaido is the one with the... And Honshu's got some... H- Honshu's the main island. Yeah. Hokkaido is the northern one with all the, with all the ski in it. Yeah, yeah. I think there's I think there's snow on Honshu as well, but right Japan, okay USA, Japan, France, possibly Australia. New Zealand. It depends on whether the snow not, is not good. France, New Zealand. And then New Zealand, you probably can as well, can't you? So I meant not Oz, but New Zealand. New Zealand's got better, more snow better than snow. Oz. Yeah. yeah, we'll have to ask the Rhines about that one. Oh, there's one other possibility. What's that? Chile. Yeah, except it hasn't got 
lifts and stuff like that yeah is it yeah, but then yeah, but rhino but... talking there about the canaries i didn't realize that those canary volcanoes got well mind you you're not going to go snowboarding on a volcano are you in the <laughs> it'd be pretty mental and no there's the snow yeah even though it's a warm place i've i've um oh, actually, i've climbed mount kenya in the snow on mount kenya that's what and the equator goes through it and actually spain has got uh snow resorts isn't it uh they're pretty crap yeah uh, anyway that, that's a nice bit... one for that Ryan. that's uh that's yeah, quite that's a cool story, that, isn't actually, it? Yeah, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd like Rhino, to... you've got to tell us now, is it possible to surf in your bodies and snowboard in the same country in New Zealand? I think you can. I reckon, I reckon, you, I reckon you can. That's your challenge, Ryan. I don't think he's ever done snowboarding before. So. No, because when we, when we interviewed Jenny Jones, he said he'd, he'd like to give it a go, but he didn't really fancy oh, no, it. We, we did discuss trying to drag him off with us one year. Yeah, anyway, the next one is uh, Chris, Chris and Logan. This was uh, recorded the same session. Oh, Chris Fowler. Yeah. You ever had a Christmas Day surf, Lou? Uh, Chris, I haven't actually. No, I've never been allowed. No, nope, same here. I've always been Christmas Day, family in the house, yeah. even though friends have surfed. But in Lantwit, there's a very famous tradition of Boxing Day surfing. And one thing that springs to mind, that one, one Boxing Day, the point was absolutely firing. And Liam O'Shea, who you all know, and everyone knows, Ripper from Lantwit, he went flying down the line on this left-hander and he popped this huge air and it was probably the biggest air he's ever done uh, before or since. Everybody saw it, it was on video, it's one of those moves. Um, and not only is now the Boxing Day surf a traditional thing that people want to get the point, the Boxing Day air has become a thing as well. So everyone's always waiting for the famous Boxing Day air. So it's become tri- quite a tradition around Lantwit that one day the famous Liam O'Shea Boxing Day air will re-emerge. Ah, interesting. My, <laughs> our Christmas Day tradition is me really annoyed that I'm not allowed to go surfing because my parents would never drive me 40 minutes on Christmas Day to sit in the car while I surf. <laughs> so that's how my tradition and ours. But I bet you always got a surfboard. Uh, yeah, well, uh, sometimes, or a bike. <laughs> <laughs> Boxing Day airs. Yeah, it's a great story. Yeah, so are we going to go for uh, Christmas Day airs in the Coney closeouts, Tom, to the show? Oh, I can't do airs. I don't want to do airs. Yeah. <laughs> But I love my board too much. The, yeah, I wonder whether Logan now is because he, he seems to be blaming his parents for the reason why he can't surf on Christmas time. So perhaps now he's got his own wheels. We might be seeing him in yeah. the water on Christmas Day then. Oh no, yeah. he's quite. He's he's like a bit of a one man crowd, Logan. Well, in Coney Corner, he is. Yeah. yeah. So let, let, let's hope for it to clean up and we can surf West Side. <laughs> right, the next one I'm going to bring in, Tom, is going to be actually it's going to be one of your Christmas stories. Oh. Did I do one? You did do one. Gosh, this yeah. must have been months ago. We're, rev- oh, we're, we're going, as Rob would call it, behind the magician's cloth there, yeah, because these stories have been collected often in summer, haven't they? Yeah. Yeah, well, I am one of those people who does try to surf almost every single Christmas day, and I've had a lot of surfs on Christmas day and a lot of surfs that are actually rubbish, but you're just going in because it's Christmas day. Uh, one of the first times I ever surfed the point, actually, was on Christmas day with my dad instead of, we, we, he said, right, oh, three o'clock this afternoon, the point's going to work and there's going to be no one in because everyone has Christmas dinner, and he was right. And I did surf the point with myself, my dad, and a local legend, Chris Gadd, the three of us in really good, clean point. And that was when I was like a, you know, a grom, and just like, and it was great, because I could take off on any wave I wanted. Um, but my favorite Christmas surfing story is actually, I'm gonna cheat and do a New Year one, because uh, I went on um, Radio Wales one morning doing a paper review, and um, we were going, to wear out to mid Wales with the Gill and Guts and a few others to surf a very fabled point break first thing on New Year's Day. And I was sitting there live on air and, uh, and um, oh, I've got to try and remember the lady's name. I was sitting there live on air and Ollie Hyde, the presenter, asked me and Sarah Dickens, so what are you doing tonight for New Year? And I said, oh, uh, we're having a massive party. Um, yeah, you know, because I knew I had to lie to stop other people from knowing I was going to try and go surfing. And I just didn't want to tell the truth. And at the time, that was when I lived in that flat over the seafront in Porthcawl. And then as I was leaving the studio, I was like, oh, uh, I have just advertised a party in my flat on New Year's Eve tonight, <laughs> live on the radio. But fortunately, at seven o'clock in the morning, not too many of Porthcawl's party crew were listening. So it was only about 10 people who turned up and had to be turned away. But then we had a great dawny. So it was a New Year's Day surf, and I remember that one vividly as well. When I listened to that back... That was a cheat, that was, New Year's Day. Yeah, but when I listened to that back, I realised that You've had another amazing New Year's surf with me. 
Oh, Linmouth. We went to Linmouth. Yeah, it looked like G-Land, didn't it? It was. And Phil Williams was there, yeah. It was absolutely pumping. Phil Williams, got a game on the show. It did actually look like G-Land, I remember Yeah, that. it was, uh, and I, I was totally out of my depth. I could probably do it now, but I was mm. certainly. I never, was, I've never seen that place like that before in my life. Yeah. It was, Incredible. Uh, yes yeah, it's, it's probably the best waves i've ever seen up close like being in the water like you know i think it's the best surf i've ever seen in the southern half of the uk that probably was yeah i never surfed in the northern half of the uk so yeah fair enough um right which does bring us on to our final little insert oh is this the winner then have you have, no, have no, you, have I, you, have I, you curated these no, is this the I, winning I book, christmas I, I day decided story to bookend on this way because they're both at sunset beach uh, oh, I, I know like, who this is. And I was like, oh, you know, how can we have two sunsets? This, this, is, uh, this is Buzzy, is this it? This is Buzzy, yeah. He's uh, yeah, Sunset Beach. Buzzy Kerbox. Absolutely. Well, I, I'm, uh, I was on Maui for a long time, but I'm in back living on the North Shore. And I remember Christmas two years ago, I rode on my bike to Sunset Beach at 10 in the morning on Christmas and it was the most perfect eight to 12 foot offshore sunset, as good as it gets. I turned that bicycle right around. I went straight home, got my truck, got my board, went back and surfed sunset. And that was, that was a, a rare treat to get really good. And it wasn't very crowded. So Sunset Beach two years ago, Christmas, very memorable. He did actually go on to surf that. Or he said, wasn't very crowded. He meant a little bit less crowded than it always is. Oh, I'm sure there's plenty of takers for Sunset Beach yeah, on Christmas I think, Day. Um, yeah, I, I don't think um, I don't think I don't think it's what we'd call like you know empty. It wasn't like no, surfing it's in. The, like it's the place you'd want to be, though, isn't it? So, <laughs> yeah, and, and it really is. You know, I, I, I've been abroad a few times. You've not been to Hawaii, have you? No, uh, done Christmas in snow. Uh, snow snowboarding christmas day like that i think i've done that with you before yeah, yeah, probably we, we, we more than once absolutely pumping and snow, um, christmas day didn't we and i've been in uh ooh, i'm trying to think sri lanka where you literally don't notice that there's christmas because everyone's a buddhist you just eat rice curry and surf all day and i did actually quite like that i'm sorry to sound like scrooge there you know i just i quite so liked you, it you just casually threw in this amazing christmas day surf yeah because you, no, you just think that it's nice to think that like the whole all, all your mates are like sitting around like fat in the cold and, and you're just surfing tropical waves all day. But I'd love to be in Hawaii at Christmas time because um, I just imagine you've still got that Christmas vibe. It's still, it's, you know, a bit it's, American, it's, it's the it? Christian yeah. world, isn't it? You yeah. know, the Americans are good at Christmas. Yeah. But, you know, it, it's all, everything is scaled around surf and somewhere like Sunset Beach on Christmas, it must be amazing. Yeah. A, that's a bucket list for sure. Yeah, if, if I could find a wave there that I'm capable of surfing, I'd be happy to go with you. Hey, so before we go, tell us about this present that's cost too much money then. Oh, well, we... She, she's probably not going to be listening, oh, so she, she won't find she out. It, it'll be I a surprise she, still. I think she finds what we do, like, massively cringeworthy. So. Yeah, so she won't tune into the show. Um, so you well, can say what previous, it is. Our previous guest, um, uh, John Purton. Oh, Johnny Purton. I went to visit him oh. uh, on Thursday. We're, we're recording this on Saturday. Oh. Um, to pick up a brand new surfboard. Ah. And... Like, like custom, you know, fancy spray jobs. So if you see a girl... I, sh I should tell the listeners that producer Dodd has recently had a, had a young baby girl. Yeah. Congratulations. And, uh, and so, so this is going to be in time for Anne to come out of her, um, you know, sort of... Well, I suppose you'd call it maternity leave from surfing, wouldn't you? So. Yeah, she, she's had a few... She's had a few um, mini mile sessions and she's been in on my big fat fish a couple of times oh, okay. and so her she's hoping for her board. first uh, her first short board session is going to be on a, on a bright pink custom oh so is, day. is that that's going to be our our christmas recommendation this year then is getting a custom surfboard support the surfing industry absolutely yeah, yeah. well i don't know um i'll just i'll go through my my best christmas day surf and then we'll get into should we get into some christmas shopping after that go on then yeah so i actually I, I like going away for Christmas because I don't like people very much. And I like going to um, like remote parts of northern Donegal because I really don't like people. Ah. Um, and I went to a, play, a big beachy called... Um, the oh, are, you, are you allowed to say... Do, no, uh, did this, you ask the girl if you this, can say the name no, of it? this place I can talk about. The other place right. I can't, I'm not going to mention. But um, the, I went to this place called the Caves of Marghera. Massive beachy. And it was, it was bloody huge, a bit stormy and basically dangerous yeah um but two guys were that's like, a long way from anywhere out there yeah yeah if, if you get into trouble there you are you are yeah. on your own but there's only two guys in the water 
Um, and they went to me, well, if you want his Christmas days, like if you go to like this place which shall remain unnamed, right. just before dark, you're going to be on one. And I took their advice, went there about three o'clock, it gets dark at like four o'clock in Donegal, it's pitch yeah. black. Then. And there's nobody in the water and it's like a horseshoe shaped bay with an A-frame right in the middle of it. And they, they told me about this, these two guys, and like a rip going either side which sort of takes you up around the horseshoe, straight onto the peak, and you catch your wave into this like channel at the side, and it just takes you back out to the peak. You just go around oh, in circles. Lovely. And I had it to myself. And then I got out, and I won't mention any names, because it'll give, you know, it'll give away, A, somebody's location, and the beach's location. And I was you know, trying to wrestle myself on my wetsuit in like, you know, minus four degrees in Ireland. Um, outside of a gravel track, and fair to say, a, uh, a Hollywood A-lister just walked up to me and said hello. And I was like, hiya, how's it going? And she was like, you know, made all the usual comments. Bet it's colder there, isn't it, and all that sort of stuff. But yeah, I had a wicked surf on my own. So, so they live there then, the A-lister? Uh, yeah, they do. Ah, right, I think, okay. Well, I think they have a holiday home there. Okay. At this, and they're overlooking this overlooking remote, the beach. perfect bay, and which nobody goes to, and they, probably don't, they don't even know what they've got. Ah, so okay. There you go. So... Christmas shopping then? You buying, have you got any surf-related Christmas gifts this year? Uh, I don't know if I have, actually. Probably a bit of wax. <laughs> wax is a good stocking filler. Yeah. So Tom, uh, Tom, buys his, uh, Tom buys his beloved a bar of wax for yeah, Christmas. And, uh, and not very romantic, but I think we're going to be talking in the new year when we come back for season... Is it season four now? Yeah, it is, isn't it? Season four next When year. we come back, for, we are going to be talking uh, surf earplugs. We are. And they're quite a good... They're quite a good one. Yeah, I've got... Uh, pretty ropey surfers here on the left yeah. side, which is the side everybody around here gets it in because of the prevailing yeah. wind. Um, so, uh, so earplugs, they're a, good, they're a good Christmas shout. Yeah, but you've got to, you, can, you can't just like say present some because you've got to go get them, get them mold. It's a really weird experience yeah. getting your ears like injection molded with this stuff and it expanding foam in your ears. Yeah, but you can give someone like the voucher, can't you? Yeah, you could do, I suppose. And I think the other, the other, the other solid Christmas present, I think I recommended it last year, is, is vouchers to go surfing at the wave or... Yeah, you know, or if you, or you know, if somebody's not, if you want to buy for someone who you know is just getting started out, surf school vouchers somewhere, or somebody like me, that's crapper than all their mates and needs yeah. to practice an improver session, yeah, or you know, or a day out supping or something. Yeah, I, I, I think experiences, I think, are a good thing. Yeah, not everyone else, not everyone's going to be able to uh, get their misses a yeah. custom and I think surfboard. There's a lot more emphasis, a lot more thought every year now on sustainability at Christmas time as well, isn't there? And I think that's the thing with experiences. Okay, you blow some exhaust fumes getting there, but you know we're not we're not buying packaging and you know buying stuff that needs to be reused. And the, too much. the wave, I think the wave is going um, uh, fully solar. Right. Well, they're probably going to struggle in the winter, but yeah. I actually had some. Annoyingly, I actually had some sessions booked for yesterday morning at the wave. It froze over, didn't it? <laughs> it froze over, yes. I they saw. Can't, they cancelled yeah. it. I was like, I was so good. I had like, I had like my, my six mil suit and my five mil gloves yeah. already to go. Wasn't it, it was 1.2 degrees I heard in the water there. Uh, Phil Williams, yeah. um, who I see at the wave all the time because I'm passing quite a lot, um, did a video of them, of, of the frozen side. They put a few waves through and it's just like crunching and crumbling. Wow. Which is pretty awesome. Do you know what it's a good, um, a good Christmas present, surfing? is mitts, good yeah. mitts. Yeah. I already mentioned it because I was in a shop in Portugal. Can we mention it in the shop? You Balsa, was it? I was in Balsa. Yeah. Um, and Chris, who runs Balsa, said, you've got to look at these. And they were five mil fur-lined XL mitts. Oh, nice. And I just wanted a pair because they were like, I was like, you're not yeah. getting cold in them. I'm one of these people who wears like seven mil boots and a six mil suit, so. Yeah. Yeah, great. So if anybody's listening who wants to buy me a Christmas present, um, mitts. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have a pair of fifty quid mitts, please. Yeah. So anyway, we're gonna, we, we're um, we're going to be taking a month or two off now, aren't we? But we'll uh, we got a few guests lined up for next year. Aren't we? We're going to be doing a, a like a surf docs thing to do with ears. We've yep. got um, yeah, we've got a couple of others. So um, yeah, if 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 anybody wants to uh, you know suggest a guest, yeah, get in touch on the usual uh, on the. Uh, Crest podcast Twitter what are we Cast Crest on Instagram Cast Crest at uh, gmail.com and yeah the same same the Twitter and uh, yeah. Instagram handles yeah, yeah. We're, we're Crest podcast on Twitter yeah oh are we yeah <laughs> <laughs> I, I, are we I, still on Twitter in the Elon Musk age um, I suppose that's, that's a controversial choice now isn't it maybe, maybe we should sack Twitter off and, and protest and, jo- and get like a Mastodon account or whatever yeah. the cool kids are doing these days <laughs> I, I don't know what's the truth social is it <laughs> yeah <laughs> truth social 
Oh, that's a, that's a Christmas gift. You can get a... Um, Donald Trump trading card. Donald, Donald Trump non-fungible token <laughs> trading card. Right, Tom, we've got to stop there. This is getting ridiculous. Yeah. Hey, right. Merry Christmas, everyone. Nadolik Slawen. And we'll see you... Lloyd in there with her. See you in the spring. Yeah. Yeah, we will. We'll be back in the new year. Goodbye.